Almost 20 years ago, my very dear friend had an existential crisis and he jumped off a London bridge into the River Thames. He was 36. We didn't know this when his wife came home to a suicide note. He was just gone. And for three weeks, we were suspended in the space between his written farewell and evidence of its achievement. And every day, a group of us gathered in his home to walk his wife through each excruciating hour of her days. But after a couple of weeks of this very intense vigil, I needed to escape and walk into the soft, broken sunlight of a cold winter's day in London, head for Starbucks, <laughs> shoe shops, and the solace of <clears throat> normality. And as I turned onto a very busy high street, which was awash with early Christmas shoppers, my legs started shaking uncontrollably. So I found a shop doorstep to sit down. And I really didn't care about the passers-by, some of whom stepped over me as they entered and exited the shop. I was in another zone. So I just closed my eyes and asked for a sign from somewhere about what had become of my friend. And within what seemed like seconds, a very strong stench made me open my eyes. And sitting next to me was a man I assumed to be homeless, offering me a polystyrene cup. Here, love, he said in an East London accent, <clears throat> I got you a cup of tea. This kindness ripped through me like a blade and my eyes brimmed over with grief. The man was as accustomed to doorsteps as I was to a bed and hot water, but I took the tea gratefully and I drank it while he smiled with shocking generosity and yellow teeth. And in that moment, I became certain that my friend was dead. And for a few moments, I closed my eyes again and prayed that the waters had closed over his tired mind like a blanket over a sleeping child. And when I opened them again, my friend with the warm tea had gone. The kindness of that moment felt like the kindness of the universe had melted my frozen sorrow. It entered the wound like Rumi says light does and it smashed my impossible need to save people as if that would somehow make me worthwhile. And it came from someone who apparently had so much less than me and yet at that time in my life so much more. I was ready for kindness when diagnosed with terminal lung cancer in 2014 it picks us up when we're brought to our knees and loves us with green juice, taking care of my four-year-old when I was in hospital, tying my shoelaces, sitting with me when I could hardly breathe for wishing something different. Even in this COVID-19 lockdown, I receive masks and sanitizers from friends in the, in the mail several times a week because kindness breaks through our narrow lives in a crisis like the seasonal flooding of the Okavango Delta, water in the desert of hardened hearts. Perhaps lockdown is a consequence of locking our spirits down and kindness is the antidote we really need.